Hi, I'm John Wilder, historian for Aleppo Shrine and uh, Boston Commandery, and I'm currently working on getting involved in the uh, archival work for the Grand Commandery of Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Um, so one of the um, things we have for you today is something that I walked in the lodge room and somebody said, uh, hey, look at this. So um, it's a uh, commandery suitcase, watch. It's not very unique in itself, you know, we, we've come across many of these, but I like that this is a complete setup uh, as it was. And I think there's some interesting things to talk about here. So often you'll find uh, either the initials, this one has the initials on the outside of the case. Uh, some will have the full name, they'll have the name of the commandery. Inside, and I actually just noticed this as we were setting up, there's actually a full cloth label here with the name of the Sir Knight. And it was Russell P. Blackington of St. John's Commandery Number no. 1. And um, I'm glad I noticed that because in Boston Commandery, I found a piece of cloth with a Sir Knight's name from St. John's Commandery on that. And I had no idea what it was. So I just learned that that would have been on the inside of a case. Um, so I'm going to pull this case apart and uh, show you um, <clears throat> some of the things that we found. I think it's besides just the uniform items. Uh, I, it's amazing what you can find when you take the time to go through every nook and cranny. There's a couple newspaper articles in here. This is May 1st, 1927. Masons lay cornerstone to temple on brow of Capitol Hill. And there's a couple pictures of Sir Knights. Perhaps one of them is Sir Knight Blackington. Going through, we have the uh, set it's nice, it's still got some of the uh, the glint to the bullion embroidery of the gauntlets. These were usually just worn on parade, and in commandery itself, you'd wear regular gloves, which I believe there is a pair in here. We have the Sir Knight's apron. Now, as we've discussed before with Keith and myself, every commandery in Masson, Rhode Island, wore something a little bit different whether it was the style of the badges, whether it was the trim. So some of these had gold trim. So gold doesn't always mean past commander. I know nowadays that they're working to bring these aprons back. That's how they've made them. But in the day, some commanders were just gold trim. But this is uh, silver. Uh, it's a regular Snipes apron with a nice um, corded tassel <coughs> cord on it. And this also has the um, the hanging clips on it. So this could sit right uh, on your sword belt. It has his name on the back. It's made by Aim Sword. And looking at these badges is one as well as the ones on the baldric. If you took them off with the rings, they put these rings on so you could take them off and polish them. I'm guessing these ones are coin silver uh, or sterling silver just from the look of them, but you'd have to take them off to be sure. Let's see if we can hang that there. We have the um, <laughs> we have the Sir Knight's baldric with the hanging dagger, the in hoc signo vincus uh, badge. This one's ended up turning upside down. The Maltese cross, and again, those look to be uh, coin silver. But this one's in nice condition. It doesn't have the reverse red uh, cross. Baldrick, so St. John's may have had separate sets as, Bos as Boston Commandery did. We have a rather old chapeau that's a um, beaver felt fur in good condition, and they had a small cross. Uh, you'll find like Boston Commanderies, I know, did not have anything on their rosette. One of the, mo one of the nicer ones I found is Boceon Commandery, which is originally in Malden, had a little metal Boceon. Um, I've been starting to collect different ones as we find them, and my goal is to make a reference sheet to uh, what each commander wore. But as you'll find if you're watching from another jurisdiction, um, Master Rhode Island did have... <clears throat> well, this is interesting. This seems to be a nine-pointed star. So I didn't notice that on the other side. So still some uh, <clears throat> still some things to, to learn about. In here we have the 
fatigue or campaign cap. Now this has a has a rain cover on it, and I won't. Let's see if we can. Unfortunately, they tended to melt to the uh, to the cap themselves over the years, just because they were usually of a waxed rubber or waxed uh, fabric. But this would have a cross under here. This is a definitely an earlier one because it has the square brim. Um, but there would be a cross under here. It's actually nice. It's got a, a cardboard stiff, stiffener on the inside. It was probably just for storage. Again, made for Ames Sword Company. One of the more interesting things we found in here, as you mentioned, we've mentioned before, we've shown you had different baldrics and aprons for the Red Cross. This had a band, which is actually sized to go with the cap that would fit on here to be worn dur during the Red Cross because you're not a full Knight Templar, so you wouldn't have your full regalia on for the Red Cross. There's also what appears to be a ballot for the town of Gloucester from 1923. Who knows why that's in there. <laughs> we have the Sir Knight sword belt. This is a pretty standard one. I believe this is also made by Ames with the silver Maltese cross buckle. It's decent shape. And then at the very bottom, something I hadn't seen, Keith hadn't seen, we found three ribbons. And these are St. John's Commandery number one. These two are dated 1924 and 1921. And this one is plain. And they say inspection committee. So my guess um, for the annual commandery inspection, those may have been worn by um, <clears throat> Sir Knights that were assisting the inspecting officer. Um, these were usually larger events in the commandery calendar. I know that Boston Commandery had a couple different souvenir items from their annual inspection. So it may have been that they were just involved in planning the overall event. It would be interesting to go back in the records of St. John's and see if we could find out more about what that committee was. But I think it just goes to show that it's important to take the time to go through everything. Um, you know, when I, when this was first pulled out from one of the lodge benches, I was you know, honestly, okay, it's another commandery suitcase. Okay, it's another baldric, it's another chapeau. But I said, well, wait a minute, you know, let's take a closer look. So I, I think whenever you're going through your lodge building with proper permissions, of course, uh, as Keith and I will tell you, it's important to keep looking. Look through the drawers, look through the boxes. You never know what you're going to find or where you're going to find it. Uh, I'd be interested to know if St. John's Commandery has even found any of these other ones because this is the type of type of item that may not have been kept, may have been tossed out after the event. So you never know where you're going to find stuff. Uh, that's why I always say uh, part of my job as a historian is to be nosy. <laughs> but uh, thank you for tuning in. If you like what you see, remember to uh, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on Facebook. Thank you.